Hello everyone, in this video we are going to solve an example related to the setting out of a compound curve. So this is the statement of the problem in which a compound curve is given having two arcs of 300 meter and 400 meter in radii. So it's a compound curve of two arcs. We are also given with some other data like uh, the two tangents of the compound curve, the back and forward tangents, which are intersecting at point B. And there is a third line D, which is intersecting AB at D point, BC at E point. And uh, the angles ABE and DEC is given. And also the change at B point is given. So let's start the solution. So let's say that this is the back tangent of the compound curve and let's say that this is the start point, let's say A point. The next B point, we don't know the location, but the angles like AD is given. So we can draw the DE line with an angle of 130 degree with the AB line. There would be B somewhere over here, but right now we don't know the location. So we can draw the DE line with 130 degree with this line. So then this will be the line which making an angle of 130 degree. So this point would be then D. Now again we don't know the location of E point, but again the angle DEC is given. So then we can draw the BC line such that that makes an angle of 150 degree with this DE line. So then this will be the angle. So this would be then E, this would be B and this would be C as this angle is 150 degree which is given. The change at point B is also given which is 1950 meters. We have been given with the two arcs of 300 meter and 400 meter. Let's say that uh, this is the first curve of uh, 300 meter and this is the second curve of 400 meter. So let's draw the sketch for our first curve. So this will be the sketch for the first curve. Let's say this is uh, the first tangent point. Let's say this will be the second tangent point and uh, let's say that this is the radius R1 of 300 meter the another curve of 400 meter TDI. So for that this will be the start point T2 and the end point would be T3 and this curve has an radius of 400 meter. So let's say R2 is 400 meter. What else we can deduce from this sketch? We can have uh, the deflection angle for the first curve this angle. So this total would be 180. So this will be then 50 degree. Similarly we can also have uh, the deflection angle 2 for the second curve as this is 150. So this will be then 30 degree. We can also have the total deflection angle as 5 which we know that is the addition of 5 1 and 5 2. So 50 and 30 will make it 80 then. Now we have to lay out a compound curve. So in order to lay out a compound curve we need to have the changes at the key points like at T1, T2 and T3. Right now we have been given with the change of the intersection of AB and BC at B point. So first we need to calculate the change at T1 point. From the basics of compound curve, we know that the distance from T1 to T would be the tangent length for the first curve. Let's say that we are representing that with small t1. So then the change at point T1 can be calculated as change at point B, this point. So we are moving backward to point T1. For that, we need to subtract first the BD distance and then the T1 distance. So subtracting BD and the T1 distance, then we can have the change at point T1. Change at point B is given, which is 1950, but we don't know BD and we also don't know the tangent length for the first curve. We know that T1 is calculated by formula of tangent length that is R105 by 2. So here R will be R1, 5 will be 51 divided by 2. So putting the values of R1 and 51, 300, 51 is 50. So by doing calculation, we can have the T1 distance as 139.89 meters. How about BD then? So the formula to calculate BD is, if you recall the basics of compound curve that we have discussed in the previous video. So BD is calculated as 
sin pi 2 divided by sin pi total deflection angle multiplied by the DE distance which is the common tangent. How about then DE? So DE is actually common tangent which is actually the addition of T1 plus T2 tangent length for the first curve and tangent length for the second curve and tangent length for the second curve would be ET3 distance the distance from here to here and that is same T2 to E you can also represent this with T2 so 139.89 plus um, the same formula but here we are going to use R2 and Phi2. R2 is 400, Phi2 is 30. So on doing the calculations, this DE distance would be 247.87 meters. Now putting the value of DE in this equation, we can have the BD distance. Phi2 is 30, Phi is 80, DE we just calculated. So this will give then the BD distance. And in the calculation, this BD distance would be equal to 125.44 meters. So now we know BD and T1. Now just putting their values in this equation of change at T1, 125.44 minus T1 distance, which is 139.8. Eight, nine. So when doing the calculations, we have got the T1 distance as 1684.66 meters. So now we have got the chain age at T1 which is 1684.66 meters. The next is we need to calculate the chain age at T2 and then the chain age at T3. So in order to calculate chain age at T2, we need to calculate the length of the curve for first curve. And in order to calculate the chain age at T3, we need to know the length of the second curve. Now let's do the rest of calculations for chain age at T2, which would be chain age at T1 at this point because now we are moving forward. So we need to add the length of first curve L1. So chain age at T1 is 1686.44. Now length of first curve can be calculated by this formula pi R1 phi 1 by 180 and if we do the calculation for the length of first curve this will come out to be 261.66. So adding 261.66 with the chain age of T1 we will have the chain age at T2 and it is 1946.32 meters. So we now have got the chain age at T2. The next is chain age at T3, which will be calculated as chain age at T2 plus the length of second curve. So 1946.32 plus the length of second curve, which will now be R252 by 180. And I'm doing the calculations. L2 is 209.33. On adding the chain age at T3 is 2155.33. 65 meters. Now we have got the changes at the key points like at T1, T2 and T3. The next is we need to now calculate the points on the curve. So that can be done by any method you like. You can do it by setting out by the taking offset from the long chord or you can use the deflection angle method. It's up to you. But most commonly used and accurate is the deflection angle method. So we are going to use the setting out of compound curve by deflection angle method. So in this method we need to know the peg interval and then we need to calculate the small deflection angles. For that we need to use the length of curve to calculate number of stations for our first curve and number of station for the second curve. Now the peg interval is to be chosen depending upon the length of both curves. So length of first curve that we have calculated is 261.66 and length of second curve is 209.33. Now I am going to choose the peg interval as 30 meter in order to shorten my calculations, the stations on the curve. So peg interval is 30 in both the curves. It is always suggested that the peg interval should be as much as less possible in order to have the multiple points on the curve so that you can set out the curve on field very accurately. So this is just an uh, calculations, uh, the theoretical calculations. So I'm just uh, telling you the method field calculation where you need to choose the least peg interval. You can choose any peg interval, maybe two meter. Then you will be having multiple points 
I am taking 30 meters so that I can have least number of points on the curve. Now let's calculate how many stations would be there for first curve. Number of stations is to be calculated by this formula length of first curve divided by the peg interval that we have chosen here let's represent that with small l1 so length of first curve is 261.66 divided by 30 we are going to have eight complete stations and one station of 0.7 times 30 for second curve number of stations would be length of second curve peg interval for the second curve which we are taking the same so 209.33 divided by 30 so 6 complete and 1 of 0.97 times the peg interval so as you know that in order to set out by the deflection angle method we need to have a setting out table so let's have a setting out table for the first curve where the first station would be l1 the rest of the stations would be let's say p1 p2 and so on and the last station would be t2 sorry this will not be l1 but this will be t1 as the start point of the first curve no peg interval we just have calculated the change at t1 that is 1684.66 now peg interval that we have chosen is 30 and for all it's seen as the last interval is of 0.7 so 30.7 that will be 21.67 the respective changes would be then and if we add this 21.67 with the change of p8 we are going to have the change of t2 the same that we have calculated if it is not coming same then it means we have committed mistake somewhere so change at T2 is 1964.32 and it, it will be same if we add them together. Now the small deflection angle for the first point it will not be there anything and then the mark so we can write as the start point of first curve. So now small deflection angle can be calculated by the formula that is 90 L over pi R where L is L1 and R is R1. So putting the peg integral value of 30 and the radius of 300 we will have the small deflection angle as 2 degree 52 minutes and 0 0 seconds this was not exact value that we have got we just have rounded off so that on field you can exactly measure this depending upon the least count of the instrument that you are using now the small deflection angle for all the respective points up to 0.8 will remain same but for the last it will be different because the peg interval is different so writing the same and for the last the small deflection angle is 2 degree 4 minutes and 0, 0 seconds so this is being calculated using the same formula but here the peg interval of 21.67 has been taken instead of 30 because the distance between p8 and t2 is 21.67 we have not got the total 9 complete peg intervals but the last interval of 0.7 times the peg interval that we have chosen so now the total deflection angle would be for the first it will be same 2 degree 52 minutes and 00 seconds so i'm not going to write the seconds but i will going to write the total deflection angle in terms of degree and minutes now for the respective points it will be and for the last you can see that it is 2 degree 4 minutes so adding it we can have exactly of 25 degree and this proves that our calculation is correct because this is half of 5 one five one is 50 degrees so we have got at 25 degree it means our calculations are correct and this will be the end point of first curve now moving on for the second curve now the starting point of the second curve is t2 the respective points would be uh, we had up to 0.8 now this will be 0.9 and so on the last point would be t3 the end point of the second curve no peg interval later on we will be having a peg interval of 30 last is that of 29.33 that is being calculated as 0.97 times 30 change at t2 we know that is 1946.32 changes at the respective points would then be we know the 
10 is at d3 but uh, this will also give you the same value of 2155.65 how small deflection angle will be calculated by the formula 90 l2 by pi r2 here l2 is same which is uh, the peg interval which we have taken same but now the radius will be different for r2 uh, for the second curve it is 400 meter so on doing the calculation we will be having the small deflection angle as 2 degree 9 minutes and uh, we will be having same small deflection for all points but for the last it will not be same because we are not having peg interval of 30 and for the last if we do the calculation it will be 2 degree 6 minutes instead of 2 degree 9 minutes so then total deflection angle would be 2 degree 9 minutes adding with the previous it will be 4 degree 18 and so on so for the last point if we add them together we can see that it will be exactly 15 degree and the 15 degree is half of 5 2 which is 30 divided by 2 you can see it's 15 degree so it means our calculations are correct in remarks you can write this t2 as start point of curve 2 end point for curve 2 so this is all uh, we have now covered the setting out of a pound curve the, the basic points are being calculated and ultimately we have uh, prepared the setting out tables and uh, this is all about the calculations we are going to have for the compound curve so this is all from this video i hope now you have got concept uh, how you can set out a compound curve how the calculations will be done so that's all thank you for watching this video